Hey everyone, for the majority of my channel's uh, videos, I've been talking about stocks that I would buy or stocks that I recommend as buys. But lately I've been getting a lot of requests from investors asking for me to share stocks or companies that I wouldn't touch or stocks that I would avoid. And Fubo TV is one of those stocks that I wouldn't touch with a 10 foot pole. In this video, I'll share with you all of the reasons why I don't like Fubo stock. In fact, I've been telling investors to avoid Fubo stock for more than three years now. And I'll share with you all the reasons why I think that's the case. So let's jump right into it. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so the primary reason I've been telling investors to avoid Fubo stock is the business model. The underlying business model or what Fubo TV does is the reason why I've been disenchanted with the stock ever since the price soared and ever since the valuation was above anything really fractional of from where it is today. And let me explain briefly what Fubo TV does. It aggregates mostly sports content and sells it to you, the subscriber. So it pays other folks and let me share with you here. It pays providers like ESPN, Fox, Warner Brothers, CBS, NBC, and others for the rights to show sports content that they control. So these major studios control the sports content and Fubo TV has to pay them for the right to show that content to you. And every subscriber that Fubo TV attracts, it has to pay these studios even more. And now, this latest slide from Fubo TV most recently is actually making the case for me. This is what I've been talking about for several years as a reason to avoid Fubo stock. And now instead of Fubo playing the other side of the coin, talking about how their prospects are so great and how they're going to grow because everybody loves sports and everybody wants to stream content instead of watching sports through cable, they've now switched their strategy. They've now acknowledged the fact that they're not in a good business and they've decided that they're going to go out and complain about it. They're going to say Fubo is now burdened with above market pricing as much as 30 to 50 percent above market distribution requirements. So in other words, they're complaining that these studios are charging them more than market rates or above market rates that they have essentially zero negotiating power that they're forced to pay these prices because they put themselves in that position and what i've been arguing this whole time with fubo tv is you should have thought of this before you decided to get into this business you could have found this out before you entered the business surely you could have contacted these companies and asked them what the rates are you were going to get charged in order to show this content and your initial contracts could have reflected that when you saw the offer from these studios, you should have said, oh, that's not a good business. I don't want to get into that business. Instead of spending billions of investor capital to get yourself into this business, lose more than $1 billion and now say, well, it's not fair. It's not fair, right? Somebody do something about it, right? So now they're saying Fubo demands market rates for content the ability to offer consumers customized packages of networks and the ability to offer consumers desirable features, capabilities which are in line with distributors such as Comcast, Hulu, and Charter. And that's down there. They are now demanding it. And so what's going to happen now? Because Fubo demands it, there's going to be a magic fairy that's going to come down from the heavens and grant Fubo its demands, that's not what's going to happen. If you don't have negotiating power, you're at the whim of what your suppliers will charge you. That's the nature of business. That's why you don't put yourself in businesses that put you at a negotiating disadvantage. And this is what I've been highlighting with Fubo TV. The content is not their own. They have to pay distributors for the content and what makes matters worse is they have to continue paying them, right? This season, they're going to pay for sports this upcoming season and the season's going to end. And then next season, they're going to have to pay for sports again. It's not a one-time fee where 
for instance, I compare Fubo to Netflix sometimes, and I know they're not direct competitors because Netflix is more a streaming service, um, uh, direct streaming service, whereas Fubo is like an alternative to cable TV, right? But still, the big difference here is that when Netflix pays to make a show, Netflix now owns the rights to that show. It pays for it once and it owns it forever. It can do what it pleases with that show. It can later on decide to license it to someone else. It can sell DVDs of that show, Blu-rays, whatever. It owns that show. Fubo TV pays for content and has to continue paying for content. And with each new subscriber, the way these contracts are structured, with each new subscriber, Fubo TV has to pay more. These are subscriber related. They are connected to subscribers. They're not just a one-time fee like 100 million for the season. It's more like $8 per subscriber or $10 per subscriber. And so as Fubo TV's subscribers increase, the amount it has to pay these studios increase as well. And for that reason, the company's been in a continuous deficit position. And I'm going to share with you just how much money it's losing. So say, Fubo saying that we have also taken meaningful steps in response to actions by competitors we believe harmful to Fubo. And what makes matters even more worse is that these rivals are considering launching a sports streaming service that's exclusive sports, a sports bundle that could hurt Fubo even more. I haven't even talked about the negative impacts that could have for Fubo TV. But here's a big gist of it right here, Fubo highlighting their global expenses as a percentage of revenue. For the fourth quarter of 2023, 87% of their expenses were subscriber related. So paying for content. Now that barely improved from one year ago from 93%, right? So that is an improvement, but when you're losing this much money on the bottom line, an incremental improvement of 6% is not gonna get you across the line. You're going to keep losing a lot of money and let me share that with you here so the latest income statement for fubo tv you can see for the three months ended december 31st their total revenue came in at 410 million their subscriber related expenses alone were 354.8 million and when you add sales and marketing and broadcasting and transmission expense that already exceeds the amount of revenue the company generated and that's not even including all their other costs like tech and general admin and depreciation and amortization. So with the fact that this subscriber related expense has not improved all that meaningfully and it's unlikely to improve all that meaningfully going forward. These studios have no reason, they have no reason, no incentive to offer Fubo better deals. No incentive. They have their own for instance, Disney controls ESPN. Disney has its own live TV streaming competitor to Fubo in its Hulu live TV. So why would Disney want to do Fubo a favor and give it better rates so that they can show that content and attract subscribers away from Hulu live TV and compete with Hulu live TV? Why would they want to do their competitor a favor? And the answer is they don't. They don't want to do their competitor a favor. Fubo, and it's just not big enough to have any kind of negotiating power against these giants like Hulu and ESPN. So with all of these losses that Fubo has been accumulating, it's coming at the expense of investors and they have been diluting shareholders meaningfully. They have now 294.7 million shares outstanding, up from 200 million the year before. So roughly 50% shareholder dilution in just one year. And this is likely going to get worse as the company's continuing to lose money on the bottom line. That money has to come from somewhere and it's coming at the expense of investors. So for now, Fubo has 245 million in cash. That's down from 370, 337 million the year before. So it burned through roughly 80 million in cash in the last year. And it has 
another 391 million in convertible notes debt. So far, investors have put in $2.1 billion paid in capital into Fubo TV, and Fubo TV has lost their accumulated deficit, $1.845 billion. They've lost. That's how much prof that's how much losses they've accumulated since existing as a business with no end in sight other than maybe they get fortunate with this lawsuit and the court orders these studios to give Fubo favorable rates, which I don't see that happening. I don't see the court ordering a company to give another company favorable rates and be more friendly to a competitor. I don't see that happening. So for all of these reasons, Fubo TV is one stock I would avoid and I have been avoiding. And I've been telling this to investors for three years now, more than three years now. The stock price is down 93% off its high from three years. And I still don't see this as a stock I would wanna touch, even if it falls another 50% from here. I just wouldn't want to own the business. I don't see a viable path to profitability for this business in any level that I would want to own. Did you know that over 90% of the people that watch my channel are not subscribed? It'll really help support my channel if you hit that subscribe button. And oh, by the way, one of the benefits of being subscribed is that I take requests from subscribers more often than I do from non-subscribers. So if you prefer that benefit, please subscribe to the channel.